All right, the next drawing we have for you guys is called the radial swing block. Um, out of all the drawings that we do in this um, SolidWorks certification practice, um, this is, is possibly the hardest one of the bunch um, for most people. Um, it has a lot to do with the amount of cuts that are on here and just getting everything correct. Like this is one you really have to pay attention to um, how you're actually cutting this out. Otherwise, it's very easy to mess this one up. A um, couple key points on this one. This is an MMGS. Um, we have 1060 alloy for our, our material. Um, we have three different variables, 125, 16 and a half, and 53. 125, you can see, is the distance from the center of this hole to the center of this hole. So if I'm looking at the isometric, I can see that right here. I have 16.5. Uh, B is 16.5. That is going to be the height of these pieces or the thickness if you want to think of it that way. Um, we will use the B divided by 2 for some offsets that we do later. And then we also have 53, which is the angle of um, this these two pieces right here. So let's go ahead and dive into this one. So we're going to start by file new. <clears throat> this is an MMGS. I'm going to start on the front plane. And if I'm looking at this one and trying to think about how to start it. I can see a lot of things are based on the center of this circle. So I'm actually going to use this point as my origin. And I'm going to draw these two circles right here first. So I'm going to circle from here, circle from here. I know the middle one, it said it was 19 for the diameter. And the outside one said 22 and a half for a radius. So 22.5 times two should give me 45 again those are there there are those two dimensions features extrude cut sorry extrude boss base don't extrude cut we can't cut anything if we don't have anything yet extrude boss base now looking at this object it is extremely symmetrical you can see this section line right here rips right through the middle of this and it is the same on both sides Anytime I see that, I, I, I always want to keep a reference plane in the dead center of this thing, which means when I do my extrusions, instead of doing extruded blind, I'm always going to try to do mid plane to keep a face directly in the center of this object. So knowing that, I can see that this thing right here is 52.7 wide. So I'm going to use that dimension. Whoop. Let's go mid plane and 52.7. There we go. That looks pretty good. All right. I'm going to go to the front view, front plane sketch. And again, the front plane is now actually in the middle of our object, which is important. Because now we're going to draw this next piece. So, this next piece, we're going to start with two center lines. I'm going to go one out to the left. And then we're going to do another one up and at an angle. Okay, so I see this one is 120 and this one is A. So I'm going to do 125 and 120. So 120, that's pretty close on that one. And then 125 for this one. And we said the angle was 53 or C. So I'm going to pop that in there. So that sets our angle. Now what I want to do is I want to create this shape right here. So I want to be able to create this whole shape. So I'm going to do the outside pieces. So to do that, um, I need to go ahead and put on the 31.75, the 35. I need to put on the thickness of this because right now I just have this. So I need to do that B divided by 2. Well, what is B? B is 16.5. Okay, so 16.5 divided by 2 is 8.25. So what I'm going to do next is going to do an offset. Now I could, and I'm going to put 8.25 in there, I could do it one line at a time. Or I can hit bi-directional. This is a nice little feature here, bi-directional. So it puts it 8.25 on both sides of the line. There we go. That looks really good. All right, next thing I'm going to do is draw two lines because this shape here, I got these. But now I need this piece here. So to get this, I need these lines to be tangent with this outside circle. 
So I'm going to go ahead and draw these in. So I'm going to snap somewhere on that circle. Just draw a line over. I'm going to select on the line itself. Control click to the circle and hit tangent. That one looks pretty good. Let's do the same thing over here. You're like, hey, why isn't that line parallel? Well, we need to make it parallel. So to make it parallel, control click this one, control click here, parallel, beautiful. And now we're going to take this line, this circle, again, make it tangent. There we go. I'm gonna add a couple more lines in here. So we gotta go up and we gotta go at an angle. Okay, now this angle right here is perpendicular. So I need to make that perpendicular. So again, I'm going to go ahead and control click these two. Make sure this is perpendicular. There we go. And it pushes this out to where it should be. And then we're going to go 31.75. There we go. That's looking really good. I need to make this piece 35. Now you can see almost all my lines are turning black here. The only other thing I definitely need to do is I need to make sure this is also parallel. There we go. That's why that was blue still because it wasn't perfectly parallel. So I made sure that was done. You can see all my lines are black now. So now I just need to trim out the pieces I don't need. So what I don't need is all this stuff in the middle. I don't need these two lines here. I don't need these two lines here. And now I need to close out the rest of it. So I'm going to close out this part. And then I'm going to also close these lines. And I need to trim off this little piece here. And I should have my entire object here. Actually, I did not want to trim that piece. Hold on, let's back up just a second. I actually want to trim this outside piece. There we go. Because I want this hole to remain. If I trim this piece, it would cover that hole. And that's not what I wanted. Features. Extrude boss. I'm going to go to my isometric view. You can see we're extruding through the middle. Now, how wide is this thing? Well, looking at it, I can do a little bit of math. So if I take 52.7 and minus 6.35 on both sides, so that would be 12.7. 52.7 minus 12.7 would be 40. The other thing I could do is just look over here. This is perfectly in line with this. This says it's at a radius of 20, which means its diameter is 40. So I know both ways there that that is going to be 40. There we go. It's looking pretty good. All right, let's continue on. The next thing we're going to do on this one is we're going to do these cuts. These cuts really aren't too bad to do. Um, you just got to pay attention to what what we're trying to accomplish right here. So we're going to go on the face, extrude, or sorry, sketch, not extrude, sketch. The first thing I'm going to do is actually do a convert entities because I want to recapture all these outside lines. It's going to help me draw this a little bit faster. Okay, so what I can see right now is it looks like all these are 9.5 away. So I'm going to use that. I'm going to use that 9.5 to offset entities 9.5 click on that line and it creates this inside piece for me perfect there we go now I also want to go ahead and redraw all these center lines out I'm gonna do that there I'm also going to go ahead and redo these other offsets, the 8.25 bi-directional of this one and this one. So what that's gonna give me is the rest of these lines right here. So I need to delete these two lines. I'm gonna extend these. So I'm gonna go up to trim, extend, extend that out, extend that out. Okay, now let's go ahead and start trimming away what we don't need. Well, I don't need any of these outside lines anymore. So I'm just going to start cutting through all these. Don't need a single one of those. Okay, now that I have all those cut through, 
I really want to keep this section here, this section here, and this section here. So I'm going to start cutting through that. There we go. Cutting through all those. Good. I don't need this little line there. And then I also don't need these two. So what I'm left with, and I gotta get rid of these, there we go. And that one, and that should do me, there you go. I got three different objects here now, three different polygons. Looks pretty good. I also need to put on my fillets. My fillets for this are typical R.7.5, R7.5. So I'm gonna do a fillet, 7.5. There, 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 and there. We also have one on both these top edges here. That looks good. And all we need to do is cut this out. Features, extrude cut. We're going to cut this, this, and this. How far are we cutting? It says 9.5. 9.5 is how far we're cutting, and you can see that right there. So I want to go blind, 9.5, looks good on that side, I need to get it to the other side. So we're going to go back to that mirror feature, so we're going to mirror, what are we mirroring it around? Remember this is why we kept the front plane in the middle of our object so we can mirror it around that. So what are we mirroring? I want to just mirror that cut right there. So we have the front plane mirroring the cut. We don't need any secondary faces or anything like that. That's looking really good right there. We really only have two steps left and that's to put on these two um, outside circles. So we're going to go to this face, sketch, <coughs> draw a circle, and we already know this is the width so we're just going to grab the midpoint and then snap to the endpoint because that's going to make it the exact same as what that is which should be 40 across. If we're worried about Figuring that out, you can see, just do a quick smart dimension, yep, it's 40. We're going to extrude boss. Now we want this to be the same thickness as, what, as whatever this is. And remember, this is B, so it's a variable dimension, which means it can change. So how do we keep this um, snapped to this bottom line? We're going to go up to surface. <clears throat> Reverse the direction. And we're simply going to say go to the bottom surface here. That means if I ever change B from 16.5 to say 20, this will also be 20 because it's snapping from the top surface to the bottom surface. I'm going to go ahead and create my circle in the middle. <clears throat> to get the center point, you just highlight, highlight your mouse over the edge of the circle. It's going to pull up a center point. And then this has a smart dimension of 16. And then we're simply going to extrude cut through all. Now this one you could do up to surface as well. That's up to you. Um, I like to usually go through all on that one. Either one of those is a perfectly viable option for that. S sketch on this surface. We're going to do the exact same process. So we're just going to snap again to that outside circle. Features, extrude boss. Again, we need to reverse the direction. We're going up to surface, so we're going to click the bottom surface. Check mark. And then we're going to go back onto that top surface, and we're going to create that circle. Again, hold your mouse over the edge. And right here, I'm going to do this a little bit quicker, so instead of smart dimensioning, I'm just going to use this radius tool right here and just type in 8. And that's going to lock that in at, at 8 radius or a 16 diameter. And again, if you're unsure, you can always double check your measurement. But that is a way to speed things up just a little bit. Right, again, go through all, check mark, and put our material on. This one again is 1060 alloy. That is our radial swing block. Good luck with this one. Again, this one is tough. It may take you a few times of going through this one uh, to get this one right. Remember, when you're doing your mass validation, you do have three chances at getting that right. It does require you to wait a little bit of time in between. That way you're just not guessing. You have to go, actually go back. It gives you time to go back to your part and take a look. Good luck with this one.